All right, three shows a week. It begins now, and why not start with your average, ordinary mock draft episode? Just Mayhem. run of the mill, right? Wrong. Mayhem in the building. Mike's got all the power. Don't miss a minute. A wild, incredible mock draft is on the way. Hey, Foot Clan, we have a great mock draft episode for you today, complete with a bunch of mayhem. But before we get started, I want to remind you the Ultimate Draft Kit is out right now, and today is the day that the Draft Analyzer is released. You can learn all about how you can dominate your fantasy football draft with our suite of tools and resources to help you at ultimatedraftkit.com. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your host, Andy Holloway. Jason Moore and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Here we are, July first. Yes, do not. Do not check the, the date of your calendar. We are here, and it is Saturday. Saturday, July 1st, Mike. The beginning of the season in a lot of ways. We're up to three shows a week. Happy to have you with us. I imagine some people were probably surprised to see that. They're checking their podcast app. On Spotify and Apple yeah. or wherever you're listening, and you see a new episode pop up, and uh, you say, "Hey, I'm in my underpants. I was about to mow the lawn in my underpants." And is that not? Well, yeah, we're in Arizona. Everyone mows their lawn in their underpants. It's too hot to go outside with clothes on. I mean, I feel like that's safe in the backyard, at it's, least. It should be. And then we've got a new episode for you. So welcome, yep. man. We're excited. Yep. Hey. Having a, a schedule. I mean, we've we've been on this schedule now for our – this is our ninth season. Yeah. Ninth season. And yet it still surprises people when we jump to three shows in July. But well, I mean, It surprises me sometimes. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how calendars work. I never know <laughs> when it's going to be another month. Yeah, and, and this is the, the reason we go to Saturday shows and go to three a week is because this is now July 1st where people start – Checking back in. I've already seen messages on Twitter of like, yep. hey, time to hop back into fantasy. Time to get prepared. A lot of the, the casuals, yeah. the casuals, they start in August. Absolutely. But you listening now? Oh, you're going to dominate them casuals' faces off. <laughs> that, couldn't yeah. have said it better myself. Uh, and they'll be like, what? where's my face? It's off. <laughs> today is a mock draft episode, but not just any mock draft. Uh, Jason and I are going head to head. But this is the second ever mock draft <laughs> mayhem yeah thanks that was perfect mock draft mayhem episode which means mike will have yeah, a baby. tremendous amount of control during look this, at me during this look draft. at me he i'm will, the captain now he will be able to ruin us in many ways put us in a position where look we say mock drafting is a a wonderful exercise throughout the off season but the real truth of your actual draft is you're going to be in a different position. You're going to be surprised. You're going to be reeling when the player you wanted goes around before you thought they were going to go, and you're going to have to think on your feet. And so Jason and I today will be facing off, trying to build the best roster we can, but Mike will be using some power-ups against us, and we're looking forward to that. That'll start momentarily. And um, last year we did this. I had the power. Mike demanded the power this year. Yes. And now, Jason, I, I know you. It. Oh, next time. <laughs> yeah. Next time there will be mayhem. The next two mock drafts are going to be pretty will, cool. That, that'll be mayhem. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yes. A new nickname. <laughs> one of the favorite mayhem. months. I'm writing that one down. Mayhem. <laughs> that is the month of the year Jason enjoys him the most. Uh, but, no, it's going to be fun. And then the next mock draft after this one, that I'm not sure what the timeline is on it, but the deucers are going to be involved. Uh, people have been asking for them to participate. I've been asking for the opportunity to mock them publicly on the show for their picks. They've been, and those things have come together. They've been crying. Oh yeah, shaking, saying we don't put us on the mock draft. They've all bought the UDK and they're prepping up. <laughs> I don't know why they're Jimmy Stewart <laughs> with like a really high voice, but they but are. they are. Uh, I said it at the top. Ultimate draft. <laughs> UltimateDraftKit.com. The draft analyzer is out right now. 
uh, came out today that lets you import your team from Sleeper, Yahoo, ESPN, or you can manually import your team and run it through the draft analyzer. We're going to break down your strengths, your weaknesses, which fantasy footballer associates with your team the most and likes it the most, um, tell you where your values are, where your weaknesses are. It's going to be um, like get in there. Uh, it's on the app. It's on the web. It's part of the UDK+. Plus, and it's easy if you just have the UDK to upgrade if you want access to that right now, ultimatedraftkit.com. Without further ado. News and notes from around the league. I feel like that was very misleading. Yeah, I it, thought we were going into the mock draft. Yeah, because this is this is more further ado <laughs> to wait for the mo the mayhem mock draft. It's like, and now the moment we've been talking about that you've been waiting for, liar. The news. The news. <laughs> all right, all right, Andy. I think, I think you're 100 percent right about that. I should have said. Let's move on or something. Yeah. Or, like, yeah, you, or maybe even let's get into the news. That you, would work. You really built up this news yeah. section. So welcome to more ado. Yes. Uh, and there couldn't be something more ado than Devontae <laughs> Parker signing a three-year extension with the New England Patriots. $14 million in guarantees. That's the number. Not a 33. It's up to $33 yeah. million in value. But uh, some people saw this and said, hey, why? Yeah. Uh, I think that's fair. Uh, Warren Sharp put, oh, out, put out a tweet so good. highlighting uh, Devontae Parker's separation numbers using, oh. using next-gen stats. That's never been his game, though, during, ever. Well, but, but listen, it cannot be your game, but it can still be unbelievable to do this. To finish. Oh, one, one, I had not seen the tweet. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. He finished in 2020 <laughs> 132nd out of 132 wide receivers. In 2021, he finished 127th out of 127 wide receivers. And then in la last year, he was 122nd out of 122 wide receivers. So dead last in separation ranking for three consecutive years. And you're right. It's not his game. Like, you know, it was never Allen Robinson's game. He was always very low in those numbers, even in his peak years. However, dead last three consecutive years, not having separation at all, is not a benefit to you as a wide receiver. Thirty-three million dollars. It's. I mean, it's. It's a one-year fourteen million. Is, is how I'm looking at. That's it. That's too much uh, for what he brings to the table. What is ironic is you know I I've seen some people be like oh so they're they're out of the Hopkins race. There's actually th this is tied to the way that they restructured this actually opened up some cap space, um in a way that might allow the team to sign DeAndre Hopkins. So while it seems counterintuitive, this move could actually be caused in order to get DeAndre Hopkins part on of the, the path. Patriots. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and, you know, Juju Smith-Schuster is not healthy yet. So he's missed all of the New England offseason program. He's been rehabbing the knee injury. Um, it's been a chronic issue for him. They don't have Jacoby Myers anymore. Like, there's a world where Devontae Parker, if they don't sign DeAndre Hopkins, has some relevance this year. And if Hopkins is signed, which, look, I I guess I'd put my the odds that New England is at the top of that list. I mean, I think New England is is likely to get him because he's eventually going to settle for less money. Yeah, I, I, that that's right now my number one destination. But, you know, Parker, Parker will have some touchdowns and he'll have some relevance. But in most leagues, I mean – I can't see a normal redraft league. If they don't sign Hopkins and Juju isn't healthy, I, I still don't know if I would use my last pick on Devontae Parker. Yeah, it's totally fair. But he could be one of those players that you see on the waiver wire after week one where he catches a couple touchdowns and you're like, oh, okay, I'll pay attention. He did some good work for himself. Oh, sorry. I was getting into the hype train, Mike. Uh, I'll just say he finished the year with six for 79 and two touchdowns against Buffalo. Trying to see if this train will run Mike off. You can't stop me. Nick Chubb. News out of uh, Cleveland, Browns running back coach Thump Mitchell saying he'll have the opportunity to catch more passes okay. so people will see that he's more than just a running back. Nick Chubb is ranked extremely high. I mean, he's uh, unbelievable. Yeah, he's he's my running back three right now. Um, has been pretty much since we launched the UDK because if you just look at, you know, that's the nice thing about statting these players out and looking at, you know, Kareem Hunt is gone. And this team is going to pass more, 
There's just not a world where he doesn't catch more balls. Like that to to have the coach come out and say what kind of the the analytics pointed to already. It's really nice affirmation, but this is um I I think this should be the the expectation this year. And and if we went back 2 years, 3 years, 4 years ago and said, "Hey, this Nick Chubb guy who's always like, you know, leading the league or or near the top of rushing yardage and one of the best running backs in the league, if he were to catch 40 or 50 passes in a season, how would he be for fantasy? I think we yeah, know the answer. Amazing. Last year, he was the number one running back through the first 10 weeks. So you're going to be extraordinarily happy with that uh, if he ends up with more targets and more receptions. During that run, the first 10 weeks where he was the number one running back, he would have caught 24 passes. So he wasn't actually catching any passes during that time and was still that dominant. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, he should be on the radar, uh, number three, number two, number one. I mean, I don't mind any of those selections. Yeah, we'll, we'll see how the targets shake out. But when Deshaun Watson got into the game uh, after serving his suspension, we saw about a 21% target share to the running back position. That would have been 14th in that time span. But the wide receiver targets were very low. So that we'll see if the addition of uh you know Cedric Tillman, Elijah Moore. We'll see that that could juice that number up and take away from the running backs, but twenty one percent, I mean the okay, that's middle seeing, of the pack. The idea of seeing him out there on third down is what I what attracts me. Sure. Because um they don't have the depth that they had. Kareem Hunt during most of his tenure in Cleveland was a starting caliber running back that demanded time on the field and was a better pass catcher. Chubb is probably the best that they have even in that role. So Miles Sanders also rumors there about catching more passes with Carolina, Frank Reich talking about it on video. Yeah. That, I was going to say, you know, I don't know if rumors is the right word. You know, sometimes you, you hear a beat reporter say, Oh, I expect so-and-so to catch more passes. This was a video of the general manager and Miles Sanders and the head coach talking about, we're going to need you to catch more passes this year. Like you did when you caught 50 great <laughs> like that yes we'll and we'll see i mean he came in his rookie year with frank reich and caught i think it was 50 passes yeah, or 63 targets 50 for 509 yeah i mean that would be huge for him the, 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 and and they signed him to a big money deal for a running back so i 100 percent believe it this is why i you know the, these are two players that when we first launched the udk i was i was much higher than what I expected, and both were because of this, just the, the pass-catching ability and necessity for these offenses. All right, let's see if this last piece of hype gets you excited. The NFL Network's James Palmer talking about multiple people in the Broncos building believing Tim Patrick is the best football player in the team's wide receiver room. That's – I mean, a lot of excitement that's about, a hot take. about Jerry Judy, but Tim Patrick was the one getting a lot of press heading into last year's camp with Russell Wilson, the best rapport. Right with Russell Wilson before his ACL injury, hearing this news, um, you know, it puts him on the radar for fantasy. It puts him in a position where I'd certainly, like, I'm I'm not touching Cortland Sutton in any circumstance. Yeah. And so Jerry Judy I'm interested in, but Tim Patrick, it, it's very, you know, his injury was very early last year. It was just, it was in training camp. And so I I do like the uh, skill set that he has. Yeah, the the news matters. Um, if you're doing like underdog best balls, you're going 18 rounds. You can get right near the end of the draft and find Tim Patrick, who will have his games of relevance. But, you know, this is hype train on Tim Patrick, but it's also kind of a little bit negative for some of the other pieces. Obviously, there's Cortland Sutton, there's Jerry Judy, there's uh, Marvin Mims. Mims. Uh, the rookie, and there's another piece of news recently that came out that said that Jared Stidham is outplaying Russell Wilson. No. Yeah. Have you guys seen that? Oh I have not God. seen Yeah. That. So that's not good. No, that's not and good. And I believe it only because I watched Russell Wilson all season last year, as I'm sure y'all did. Limited. This is a problem. So if you're telling me that Tim Patrick, hey, he's healthy, he's in the mix, now we got like four good wide receivers and Greg Dulcich and Russell Wilson still sucks. That is like, do you, do you sign, sign me out of that? <laughs> I don't want, Hey, um, sign me out. Yeah, exactly. Do you know how big of uh cojones 
that this team and the head coach would have to have to make that pivot? Oh, but you, they have it. I mean, they have. This is Sean Payton's team now. Russell Wilson. Sure, they have could, an out. I mean, if if Sean Payton comes in and Russell Wilson sucks and he says, "Yeah, we're not going to do this. We're going to cut you at the end of the season. Move on. Take a giant dead cap." That, that could I happen. Don't, I maybe you're right, but I have to believe that a majority of the conversations in bringing in Sean Payton was help us not have wasted all of this money. You are the guy to fix the problem that happened last year with this monumental investment. I don't know if the team would give him that ability or not. Yeah, I, I mean, obviously that's their goal. <clears throat> Best case scenario for everyone involved with the Broncos is that Russell Wilson regains his Hall of Fame-worthy career um, you know, at the direction of Sean Payton. But I do believe that the long-term investment of the franchise is far more committed to Sean Payton than it is to Russell Wilson. Now, what if I told you the account that tweeted out the news about Jarrett Stidham in their bio, it says, Jarrett Stidham hype man. <laughs> now, did they change it after that? I, I mean, I don't know that it matters. <laughs> Um, I, uh, look, I am anti Russell Wilson, so I'll take all bias. Also, also, I don't know how we made it through an entire segment here, Tim Patrick segment, and not even say fireball Jones, which is his true oh, birth yeah. name. That's on us. If you look at the certificate, the doctor signed it. Yeah. Fireball Jones. He's back, baby. I'm just, I was a little worried that maybe the nickname is what really Maybe set him up for failure last well, like year. A, like a uh, Smash Jackson, Paul Perkins situation? <laughs> yeah. Like, no, uh, never. So, yeah, Fireball Jones could be relevant this year. I am, you know, much more optimistic in him having – him and Judy having relevance than, than Jason, the uh, Jarrett Stidham truther. But um, <laughs> because there's far worse situations in fantasy, I think, for rookie quarterbacks, unproven quarterbacks, where we're still looking and paying attention to the wide receivers – Jerry Judy, despite the absolute disgusting performances last year, still had games that mattered. So we'll see. He looked Denver, good at the end. Denver with Sean Payton. Um, it could be a little bit of a renewal. That is it for hype. I don't have anything else. There's no more ado? There is one more ado. <laughs> little Saturday tease, Jason. Um we're going to finally get into the mock draft. Are you prepared? I don't even you, believe you at this we, point. You've got, you've got your Quatch <laughs> hat on, and it's time to do it. Quatch. The Fantasy Footballers Mock Draft. Well, here we are. Jason, we're going head-to-head, -head, but Mike is here to ruin the day. Mike has three mayhems that he can use on each of us during the draft they're up on the screen if you're watching on youtube here is what mike has control over he can make us he can veto a pick which will make us choose a different player and he can use that once on each of us he can replace a pick with his own choice which he can also use once on each of us mm. and then the final one is he can Make it opponent's choice. So he will give me the ability to pick your player and you the ability to pick my player. It is a 12-team half PPR draft. I am drafting from the three spot. Jason's in the six spot. One quarterback, two running backs, two wide receivers, one tight end, one flex, four bench. Jason, Jason you seem you seem nervous. You look I, a little sweaty. Yeah, so you know, you're 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 laying the groundwork, you're setting up the rules, yeah. and you're illustrating what Mike's options are he can make us repick he can pick for himself or our opponent can pick and I'm sitting at the 106 and I have a lot of fear that I know exactly <laughs> I, I just I think I know one thing that's coming but we'll see so um I don't know like if, if you think about our three personalities I tend to think Mike is the most merciless with power so I think that this could be a very dangerous draft for us and um, he is also very attuned to sensing when we are really yes. hoping he doesn't do something. And so I'm, I'm going to try to see how much psychological warfare okay. we can do. I'm going to do a lot of aura reading. 
Oh, yeah. good, 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 yeah. good, good, good. What good. color is Jason's aura, by the way? Right now? Yeah. Blue. Okay. That's right. Yeah. He got he, he was right. <laughs> <laughs> That's impressive. Uh, so here we go. The draft has begun. And uh, look, we're seeing this more and more. Justin Jefferson at the 101. Jamar Chase at the 102. And I'm sitting here at the 103. Yeah, that's a gift. And it's Christian McCaffrey, so I'm going to take him. Uh, we have not – we've seen, what, an average of four or five running backs going in the first 12 picks. That is not uh, normal from the last nine years. <laughs> yes. Sorry. And so uh, I'm I just – I just saw that Travis Kelsey went at the 105, which means Mike can't mayhem me into Travis Kelsey in the first, which I is what I assumed was happening. And I was not going to. Oh, good. But so, I wanted you to sweat it out, so I'm a little bit disappointed here with Team 5. And I, I know I need to be patient when I make these picks to give Mike the opportunity to destroy me. Um, Getting Christian McCaffrey at 103 did uh, spark my interest here to use a power-up right away, but... I You're just know. letting it just settle yeah. in. You're letting us get a sense I, of security. I got to let the dust settle and then find my way. So Jefferson, Jamar Chase, I took Christian McCaffrey, a gift at 103. Uh, I was really worried about that pick being stopped because I didn't have a strong conviction with the number three pick with other players. Like, I Which is why you didn't give Mike the opportunity for mayhem. And you That's just, right. I just was like, I'm doing this. No, we can uh, we can go back. No, no, we're I mean, good. We're good. Uh, Austin Eckler went 104. Travis Kelsey at 105. Another thing we're seeing a lot this off season, Kelsey inside the top five because of that conundrum. You get to the point where you're like, uh, well, I know he's great, and I'm unsure about these other options at running back. Jason's on the clock. This is an easy pick for me. <laughs> this would be Cooper Cup, who I've talked about recently. I could take him at the 101. I could take him at the 102, the 103. Certainly here at the 106 when – if Christian McCaffrey and Austin Eckler are gone um, and Cooper Cup is available, that would Keep be my talking. pick. I will take Cooper Cup. I'll allow it. Oh, all right. <laughs> I, did, I was just waiting. All right, Cooper Cup. That was a moment. Mike's finger, <laughs> is, you couldn't hear it on the podcast, but it was creeping. Oh, dude, people could feel it. It was creeping towards the button. So, man, unscathed in the first oh, round. Man, generous, kind. Cooper Handsome. Cup. Yeah, thank you. That would have been my pick if McCaffrey was stolen from me by Mike. So, uh, Cooper Cup at 106, great pick. Bijan Robinson at 107. Tyreek at 108. A couple running backs. Jonathan Taylor, Nick Chubb. CeeDee Lamb and A.J. Brown rounding out the first round. Second round begins with Stephon Diggs, then Saquon Barkley and Derrick Henry. Both of those players seem like, um, you know, not a bad place to be in the second round. And then uh, Amon Ross St. Brown. Devontae Adams, and then Patrick Mahomes. Mm -hmm. uh, and Jason back on the clock with Cooper Cup, just setting the foundation of just a great team on the way. Yeah, just a great team on the way. There's uh, a couple players that I had hoped dropped to me that didn't. Um, I'm really uh, proud of what's happened to the ADP Chubb. Uh, you know, about a month or two ago, he was falling to the like the two three turn. Now he's in the first round, uh, which is where he belongs. Um, but Derrick Henry has fallen. I've seen him in the third round. I would have loved to grab him. He's not there. Uh, since I've got Cooper Cup, if there is a great running back left, I would go that direction, and there is to me. It's yeah. Josh Jacobs. Um, so if I am allowed to pick, my <laughs> pick would be to pair Cooper Cup with Josh Jacobs. And uh, no. <laughs> Mayhem. Yeah. Yeah, here we go. There's no, there's no way that that was going to happen. The, no. Because it was too delicious. No, I mean, th yeah. that is not going to happen. And we're going to see. Yeah, what power-up are you using? Uh, I'm going to pick. Oh, okay, for Jason. Yeah, and we're oh. going to see. See, I can't even rejoice that much because <laughs> if I if I overindulge in what's happening to you. Then you're going to get the it. The trap is set for me. Like, what happens here to Jason's team? Should he. Like a lot of a lot of drafters are dealing with this situation of what do I do with the big name quarterbacks? Mm. If I take them early, what does my team look like? Well, Jason's going to find out. <laughs> oh man. I am going to give you Jason. Mm, yeah, which one? I'm going to give you Jalen Hurts. Yeah, my man. I I didn't know if you were going to I showed a little bit cuz between do you have Hurts or Allen ranked so higher? So I I have Josh Allen ranked higher in, in my rankings, but you know that You're a Jalen, Jalen Hurts, Hurts guy. is yeah. my guy, so So yeah. I I I hurt you a little bit, but then I put the band-aid on. Yeah. 
All right. Oh, oh, geez. This I should am, be fun. I'm over here because <laughs> I too have found good fortune in this draft. <laughs> Jason has Cup and Jalen Hurts, and then Waddle, because Jalen Hurts goes early, and I, I do want to point this out before disaster strikes my team. With Mahomes and Hurts going in the second round, it was Waddle and Pollard that went next. When quarterbacks go early, like we've talked about this, it's not a late-round quarterback universe right now, but that doesn't mean that the realities that we brought up in late-round advice aren't true, which is that when positions, onesie positions like quarterbacks and tight ends go early, it pushes down value at the other positions. Josh Jacobs is still on the table for me oh, at man. two. That'd be a great start. Ten. That would be such a good start. And that will be my pick if I'm allowed to make it. <sighs> great pick, Andy. It will be Josh Jacobs. That what? What a great pick. Lock that in. <laughs> oh, you son of a gun! <laughs> oh, I knew it. Really? I, I'm yo, good. Of oh, course. Yeah, yes. Of course. <laughs> Joshua Jacobs. Be because that's the way better decision. Mike is nailing this. The fact that, I mean, that's just putting an, he gets an extra jab here because he saves his mayhem pick on not using mayhem, but causes mayhem just back to me again. Did you want Jacobs? Because I got him. Uh, no, he got Jalen Hurts. He got the guy he wanted. So uh, I start with tier one, tier two running backs, Christian McCaffrey, Josh Jacobs. Josh Allen goes next. Brees Hall. Travis Etienne and Ramondre Stevenson. So the running back run has begun, and Jason has none of them yet. Uh, yeah. Um, I am back on the clock with McCaffrey and Jacobs, third pick of the third round. Looking at the landscape here with those two running backs, I mean, this is this is kind of going back in time to the strategy that is, is most often played out by my teams, which is if you have powerhouses at that position, the freedom you feel the rest of the draft is significant. Um, I, I have – Lower tier running backs I like later. I don't feel a pressure to go grab one now. If I wanted to, the guys on the board that are actually the most attractive to me is Jameer Gibbs. Um, because what better position than having Jacobs and McCaffrey to let Gibbs be this potential top tier running back? Otherwise, Najee Harris, Kenneth Walker, Mixon, Dobbins, I'm not as enthusiastic. At wide receiver, it's it's Garrett Wilson on the board right now. Olave. Um, boy, I... I'm actually tempted to take Gibbs and go three running back to start this draft. I think that will be my pick unless it is ruined by Mike. I think Garrett Wilson obviously is jumping out at me, but but I think the idea of adding Gibbs and maybe actually having like three of the top eight running backs potentially mm. in PPR. I am going to – I'm a little surprised here. Right. Cause I'm trying to throw you off, You Mike. did. You mayhemmed the mayhem because yeah. I was going to – force a very high T start for you. I was going to make you go triple running back, but then you said, no, I have more T than you think. <laughs> so I'm good. Yeah. You, you could start with your three running backs. I'm not feeling the mayhem at all. I, Jameer Gibbs is, we'll see is the pick <laughs> Garrett Wilson went next. I think that's what the most people listening probably expected Garrett Wilson off the board there. And that's where Mike would have. Yeah, that would have been, but I, I do. I am very enthusiastic about Jameer Gibbs potential and there's no better play like I don't want to bet on him necessarily uh to start the year being this like league winner but I don't have to with those other two guys so back to Jason on the clock Garrett Wilson and T Higgins go back to back I don't know if Higgins would have been tempting for you there no uh, I, I like Higgins in the third round but Higgins and Devonta Smith are very very similar obviously they're both the the wide receiver twos that are extremely talented for their team the fact that I have Jalen Hurts if I was going to be picking between T. Higgins and Devonta Smith, I would have chosen Devonta Smith. Right now, I'm in the third round. I don't have a running back. So this is where if there's no running back I like, I'm going to go pretty much zero RB and just figure it out, draft a, a handful of later round running backs and try to uh, take that strategy. There is, however, one running back that I like on the board. There's only one? There's on well, there's only one to me that is in a tier. Too much information. <laughs> Look, I'm trying to help the people. Um, to me, Najee Harris is still a, a a running back one. I think he gets the work. The upgrades on the offensive line I don't think can be overstated for the Steelers considering how bad they were. They were a back half bottom tier offense last year. I believe the Steelers this year are going to be a middle of the pack offense. And that's a huge jump. A lot of times we only think of big jumps as in which offenses are going to become a top five, top six scoring offense. But if we're drafting all the Steelers based on what happened last year when they were putrid 
and then they move up to a middle tier offense. That's a huge yeah. You get value back. Uh, Can I ask back. you a question about that then? With your confidence of them moving to middle of the pack, something we never would have considered as a you know during last season. You like Deontay Johnson? He was brought up on the show. Mm -hmm. Are you actually willing to have two Steelers on your roster? Yeah, I think I would be. I mean, this isn't. It, it, it's because of the value. You know, it's not like I'm spending a a, a second and third to get sure. those two guys. Okay. If I would be, I would be spending a third and a seventh to get those two guys. So, if I'm allowed to make this pick, usually in the middle of the third when Mark Andrews is available and he is, that's an auto pick for me. But because Mike forced a quarterback, I don't like having a quarterback and tight end. You run out of other positions. Shouldn't have said that. I will draft <laughs> Najee Harris if yeah. I am allowed. Yep. Make, oh, make it go through. Make it go also, through. Also, um, just as a note, because you are for, through your first three rounds allowed to get your own picks, when Mike uses his opponent mayhem, I'm a, I'm going to come after you, bro. <laughs> You're getting Tom Brady. <laughs> good. good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good to know. Good to I, know. I get it. Um, so Najee Harris is the pick. Uh if Mike had handed me your pick there, I would have gone Mark Andrews to one Z U, yeah, double one yeah. Z U to see what that looks like. <laughs> Olave goes next. Mark Andrews does go off the board, and then it's Debo, Ken Walker, Devontae Smith, um, Amari Cooper, and then going into the fourth round, we have Metcalf, a pair of quarterbacks back to back, Burrow and Lamar. Uh I would have considered Burrow a little bit here in the fourth. Uh, Keenan Allen, Aaron Jones, and Calvin Ridley. Aaron Jones in the middle of the fourth. That's one I feel like you might look back on after the year and go, wow, that's a steal. Jason back on the clock here in the fourth round. Yeah, he is. I am. Um, you know, I, I think it's worth saying. So if you would have given me Mark Andrews and I would have onesied onesied, it, it's funny because I love Cooper Cup. In the middle of the first, love it. I love Jalen Hurts. I think he's going to be phenomenal. He was a my guy last year, and I would I would love to have him. And I just said Mark Andrews. Is, a, is my favorite pick in the middle of the third. So you'd have three great picks, but that highlights how important roster construction is and thinking through your whole draft, not just who's the guy I like on the clock. Um, that was I a mean, hard word to say, you know? Clock. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't even say anything. But here's the thing, Jason. You took Najee Harris. You could have taken Mark Andrews. Here's the fourth round, and you have Mixon and Dobbins on the board. You have Miles Sanders, who you love on the board, Cam Akers, who you love on the board. Any regrets of not going onesie? Because um, you could have built... A decently strong running back room, and had maybe the best at each position for yeah, those other three. It would have been interesting to see how it works because I don't usually do it at the end of the drafts. I mean, obviously, I I like Mixon. In fact, if I'm allowed to make a pick, that's going to be my pick here because mayhem. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, go ahead, man. I'm I just. You were talking through all those guys you like. I'm like, that's interesting. But more interesting to me is what? who would Andy pick if <laughs> if he were on the clock with your team right now? Oh, I, I already have it. I, oh, I, mean, okay. I know. I already have it. I, was, um, I, I think I know who you're picking. I was sending you telepathic and messages. And look, you've, you've kind of taken the, um, the beating so far, right? Mm -hmm. And by kind of, you've had the entirety of the beating so far. <laughs> but I look, I know how much... You love this guy. There, yeah. You might not love anybody as much as this guy. So in the fourth round, why not pair Cooper Cup, who I assume is your number two wide receiver, with your number one? That is who Terry I thought. Terry McLaurin. <laughs> that, that, that is who I assumed you would give me. And the nice – Please select Terry McLaurin, The Jason. nice news is that if – the if Mike had picked, oh, you got off easy. I, I did. If Mike had picked that, I just need to repick and choose someone else. I would have chosen Terry McLaurin. So okay, um, I, I thought you were going. I was going to be more ravenous. <laughs> you thought he was going Hawkinson. I thought he was yeah. going Hawkinson. <laughs> that would have been. Um, I don't know. I don't know if you could have survived that. But Terry McLaurin here uh, ahead of a, a running back need with some other wideouts on the board. Um, you know, I know you love him. You got to have him. Justin Fields goes next, TJ Hawkinson after that. I have McCaffrey, Jacobs, and Gibbs. Running back is, is well, pretty much off the table for me. Mm. Great. I mean, never say never. Um, that's a real problem. <laughs> I, I, see, I think I, I think I realize now the risks associated with positional stacking in a draft like this. Um, if I'm allowed to make the pick – uh, I'm not happy with how thinned out the wide receiver room has gone gotten. Uh, I, there's not there's a lot of names 
that you recognize Hollywood and Mike Williams and Godwin and Judy. Um, Justin Herbert is sitting there as a potential tear break at quarterback. Kittle and Pitts are not really in strong consideration. I'd like to go. Um, I think if it, if it is my pick, I think I'm going to go to Mike Williams here. I think that's going to be the pick, but it's not. Yes. <laughs> yes. There's just, there's no chance. I'm not going to get a balance this team. No. And I mean, it's like tit for tat, you know, Andy pick for Jason. Yeah, give it to me. And I think that Jason, yes. so we'll see if Jason is as merciful oh, yes. to Andy. Oh. Uh, Jason, please uh, make the pick. Yes, I would love to. I want to be merciful to my good friend Andy because right now he obviously has Christian McCaffrey, Josh Jacobs, and Jameer Gibbs. That's that's a that is a great that's robust that's robust running back. But it's it's also I made a mistake. It gives you the power to maybe take someone who's got great upside. Mm. But a lot of risk mm. because, you know, you've got running backs to cover up right. if it doesn't work out. So mm. I think Cam Akers <laughs> is perfect for this spot where, I mean, you're talking about a guy who could be a top six running back. I mean, he could be out of the league, but There's so many running backs. You, so now you have Christian McCaffrey, Josh Jacobs, Jameer Gibbs, and Cam Akers I, I in the history of the go- fantasy footballers. We have it's, never started a draft it's with four it's running backs. It's not going to go well for you, man. And we've got time left. Oh. Um, so Cam Akers, huh? Yeah. yeah. Congrats. Uh, I like Cam Akers. Whatever the opposite of zero RB is, that's what I'm running out yeah. there. Uh, McCaffrey, Jacobs, Gibbs, and Akers. This is this is new territory. Hopkins, Mixon, Herbert, and Dobbins go next. I'm back on the clock. <laughs> I, I know. Don't do it. But, but Mike could give you a running back here. <laughs> Mayhem. Mike, oh, Mike Williams would have been my pick. Again, <laughs> I can't believe Mike Williams made it through that that turn there. Um, but I mean, come on, like we got to build. Oh, this is a this is a squad this is, this is that, IT. <laughs> that look Dan Campbell. If Dan Campbell played fantasy football, he would give you this is absurd. The, the absolute seal of approval. What did I do with Gibbs in the third? I, I, you say, I set the table you, for my own demise. And I'm, look, I'm but I will be merciful because I'm giving you a player that I love. You you don't love him as much as oh, no. I do, but I'm just going to share no. the gift of the brand new starting running back oh, for the yeah. Minnesota Vikings, yes. Alexander Madison. No. <laughs> yes, this five no. running back start. Let's see. Oh, and I hate Madison. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Oh, it started so good. <laughs> this has gotten even better. <laughs> McCaffrey, Jacobs, Gibbs, Akers, oh. Madison. Yeah, that Let's... is a strong running back room you have there. We, can oh. you run? Can you now that we're you're going to be up in the sixth round? Can you run through your uh, tight end, quarterback, and wide receivers? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hold on. Done. <laughs> yeah. All right. Oh, wow. it was it was compounded by the like Miles Sanders was there. I thought maybe you'd give me James Conner, but no, you give me Alexander Madison. Yeah, all right. But he is my fifth RB, so I'm feeling. Yeah, he's just he sits he's a on depth the bench. piece, <laughs> along with three others. Um, all right, Jerry Judy off the board. Jason mercifully back on the clock. Now, from the the mayhem tracker here, Mike has Mike has one mayhem left for each of us. Yeah, right? I have I have my nope. Which is just he's going to shut something down. Yeah, yep. and we have to and we pivot get to pick again and make a different selection. So I'm on the clock here. I've got Cooper Cup and which Terry means McLaurin. I can. That means I'm guaranteed to be able to draft another position. Yeah, you you. I can, am not getting six RBs to start this draft. It's it's beautiful, man. This is wild, man. <laughs> wild. The you gift know, of Jacobs and Gibbs, which I thought Mike was giving me, was a curse. All right, Mike, you have Cup, Hurts, Najee, and. Terry McLaurin. Jason does. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, Jason does. I regret giving him Terry McLaurin. I should have done something far worse. <laughs> mm-hmm. But uh, uh, you're back on the clock. All right. So um, here I think I, I'm in a position to take the best player available. If there's a great running back, if there's a great wide receiver, someone that I believe in, I, I'll, I will take them. There's a handful of wide receivers I like. Um, and at running back, there are a couple running backs that I think could be good. There's one running back I like. That would be James Conner. I only have one running back, so I would take James Conner if allowed to make the pick. Mike is giving the nod of approval. Yeah, Mike seems like his he needs to give his finger a rest. He yeah, push that button too much. I'm a little worn out over here. So yeah, now, honest. now I'm okay with you know so the, much mayhem. The Hurts in the second because Hurts is going to be awesome and dominating this season. 
Uh, the fact that I was able to get what two running backs that I believe in, in Najee and James Conner, to go with two, uh, you know, the number one and number two wide receiver, Cooper Cup and Terry <laughs> if McLaurin. You need- Which one's number one? <clears throat> well, Terry McLaurin. Okay. Yes. If you need to trade for a running back at some point during the season, <laughs> yes. I'm available. I know where I'm to go. taking offers. Hey, Team 12 doesn't have one yet. No, they don't. They went almost full wide receiver stack. Uh, after Connor, I'll go quickly. Kittle, Cook, DJ Moore, Damian Pierce, Drake London, Chris Godwin. Godwin at 512. Interesting potential value there. Pitts and Goddard, back to back. Um, not that I have the luxury of looking tight into quarterback right now. <laughs> Christian Watson, DeAndre Swift, Hollywood, Rashad White. Jason's back on the clock. You know, Hollywood was someone I was hoping would sneak all the way through to be my wide receiver one. But Jason may uh, may ruin my plans on the, the remaining wide receivers here. We'll see. Yeah, I mean, I hope to. Um, it, no matter what, mayhem or not on this pick, I'm certainly taking a wide receiver away from you. Uh, I am sitting here on the clock. If, if Kyle Pitts had made it to me, this is a spot in the middle of the sixth where Kyle Pitts gets to often, and I would have drafted him. He went at the top of the sixth. So I'm going to go with a guy who somehow is still on the board, don't do it. Mike Williams, yeah, who you I, wanted three picks ago, two picks ago. I tried to take ago. him two times. Yeah. Yep. I'll allow it. All Don't right. <laughs> My man. <laughs> oh, good, because Tyler Lockett was still there, and That's I was just <laughs> worried there were two great wide receivers still left. We have enough rounds where I was hoping I didn't have to burn my final power up. But seeing Tyler Lockett make it onto your squad here would have been very disappointing. Mm. But you went Mike Williams. And then Lockett, though, went ahead of me. So uh, Kamara in between those two picks. I'm on the clock. Are you sad that Kamara went? <laughs> You're a little disappointed you can't yeah, draft him? Should something happen to him, you could wait it out very easily. Not sad. And uh, here's the deal. I've got five running backs. I'm taking a wide receiver. When you're in a position where this is my wide receiver one, there are names on the board that I am excited about this year. I like Brandon Ayuk a ton. I've talked about it. Um, I like upside uh, of Jahan Dotson. But there is one player on the board that will fill this role of wide receiver one, and I will have enough confidence that he can do it, uh, that is being massively undervalued, in my opinion, that has done it every year for a generation. I don't even know He's where you're going. He's going Mike Evans. Mike Evans is the pick. Really? Mike Evans at 6'10", okay. Godwin 5'12". Welcome to the locket. And, um, oh, I, I should not have selected no, you're, without no, giving Mike you permission. Mike Evans is fine. So, I, you know, this is the Lockett-Metcalf situation of last year. Quarterback confidence dwindles. Metcalf and Lockett were undervalued. That's what I see with Godwin Evans. I'm I'm okay with him as my first. Uh, I almost feel better than Mike Williams in that situation, just knowing that week-to-week Mike Evans is that premier target. So I'll take him there, and then it goes Pittman, Javante, Deontay, which would have been my pick with the next one if Mike let me have him. And unfortunately, Brandon Ayuk went next who also would have been my pick. So I need to at least glance at the other positions. Darren Waller, the best available tight end. Uh, at quarterback, I can't do it right now with how thin my wide receiver core is, but Lawrence, to, uh, I'm just going to have to play that late with the uh, hand I've been dealt by you sons of guns. So at this point, I'm looking at wide receiver. I'm thinking uh, about Jahan Dotson. I'm looking at Traylon Burks. He came into camp in great shape. Yeah, the, the news has been very positive on Burks. So um, I think I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with the strategy here at wide receiver of top target in the offense. I view Evans as that, and I view Traylon Burks as that. If you're allowed, yeah. if I'm allowed, I will allow it. Okay. So Mike's saving that so I can have fear throughout the remainder of the draft. <laughs> Evans and Traylon Burks. Look, it's not my uh, dream team starting a wide receiver, but what I know is that they're both going to receive regular targets on a weekly basis. Uh, I know you like Traylon Burks, Jason. I do like Traylon Burks. He would have been my pick without question. He was highest in my queue. I was ready to try to select him if Mayhem did not intervene. I am balanced right now um, enough in this type of a league. I've got two running backs, three wide receivers, uh, and Jalen Hurts. I'm not in love with any of the tight ends. Usually in the middle of the draft, I don't do tight ends. I'm going to take Mark Andrews in the third. I'm going to take Kyle Pitts in the sixth. And then I'm going super late, uh, whoever is available, you know, with one of my last picks. So having Jalen Hurts 
and having that strategy for me at tight end, that means I'm just looking at running backs and wide receivers, and I like a lot of them. Um, I, I really like Jordan Addison. Um, I would have probably selected Jahan Dotson here. This is um, this is one of those situations where we've, we've talked about this uh, over the last couple months. When you take a Terry McLaurin and you like Jahan Dotson, Terry McLaurin, I think, is the better player, will have a better fantasy season, is worthy of the pick. I liked the pick. But it does take Jahan Dotson out, who might be a better value, because now here we are three rounds later and he's available. But I love Jordan Addison. I'm happy to take Jordan Addison. And I like David Montgomery at running back. So given all of that, well, I would... Which one do you like the most? I would select... Hmm, let me think how <laughs> I want to play this. Yeah, this. The first ever, like, you say a name that you don't want to pick. To Maybe. try to get me to push the button, Maybe. but then I don't push the button, and you end up drafting someone you don't want. Or do I make you think that I think <laughs> that, and instead I'm going to go Jordan Addison, if uh, if you allow. Uh, no. <laughs> yes, I got you, yeah. sucker! I wanted David Montgomery. <laughs> I beat the man. I outthought the thinker. Oh, I had three wide receivers and two running backs and only David Montgomery I wanted. Booyah! I he got seems my happy, guy Mike. And David Montgomery. He Sorry, seems Mike. real happy. David Montgomery, James Conner, Najee Nicely Harris. Done. Not Thank a bad you. way to piece your running back room together after Cup and Hurts to start the draft. You're back on the clock. Uh, after Montgomery, Pacheco, Press, uh, Dak Prescott, uh, Press Prescott. Um, <laughs> Jackson what? Smith I think and Jigba. still said it wrong. Wait, Darren that? Waller, did Dak call, Prescott. Did you call Dak, him Brass? I heard something like brass that. Brass Musket. Brass Musket, <laughs> quarterback. Bill Brasky. Bill Brasky. Uh, Jackson Smith and Jigba, Waller, Dylan, Watson, B-Rob, Kirk, Dotson, Addison, Pickens, and Tony. So uh, it's really nice seeing a big run of more wideouts. Yeah, I was a little sad at that. There was there was a piece of me that hoped Jordan Addison would make it back around. I think his situation in Minnesota and his talent um, will will really uh, blossom and shine. So since there was a run of wide receivers, as, as flowers do, yes. yeah, they well, blossom and then they shine. You know, like a sunflower looks like it's you know letting off its own light. Okay, all right. Um, I'm gonna go with a different rookie, one that I think there I have much more concern about. I'm not as confident as I am in Jordan Addison. But he's got a much better quarterback, and his situation is pretty good. No, I have Mike Williams. I was going to take Quentin Johnston, <laughs> but I just saw I have Mike Williams, so I'm not going to you take You almost made him yourself. I almost did. Instead, I'm going with a post-hype sleeper, a guy that I loved, unfortunately, last year in Gabe Davis. The situation for him, though, you know, g getting exactly him. exactly the same. Yeah, it is. The situation is exactly the same. And, you know, his, his high ankle sprain in week two last year, and it's funny because if he wasn't as hyped as he was last year, he didn't have a bad season. You know, it wasn't like he uh, had uh, one of those just just complete wash. I think he was the wide receiver 29 or something like that. But he was drafted to have yeah. a breakout, and he didn't break out. So I'm, I'm going to take him here close to the ninth round. Yeah, you don't have the rose color last year for Gabe to take him here with some <laughs> upside. Yeah. It was bad. But Gibson goes next. Michael Thomas. I'm on the clock. I'm going to play the game. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be public about it in the face of mayhem. Uh, I'd like to have Tua as my quarterback. I feel like it's a tear break for me at quarterback. Um, but I'm going to play the game. And the two guys drafting after me at the turn have quarterbacks. And so it gives me the opportunity here to take another wide receiver. I hate the situation I'm in because, you know, David Montgomery, great value there in the seventh round. I can't even look at the running back tap. Like, that's not a possibility in this <laughs> hey, draft. you can. Yeah. Don't let um, someone tell you what even you can players, do. Even players that I like on that list are out of contention for my team. So Samaj, P. Ryan, your guy's there. Yeah, it, to be my running back six. Um, look, it's Quentin Johnston if I'm allowed to make the pick. I'm going to take him uh, because this is the perfect position. I've got two starters, Nevins and, and Burks, and now I can look to maybe get some late season emerging upside out of a rookie. We see them break out every year. Because my other options are has beens. It's it's Cooks and Schuster and and Sutton and, and and these are not guys or the injured Bateman. Like I'm not messing around there. I want the rookie if I can have the rookie. Make it happen. Yeah, because you're going to save your mayhem for a worse situation. Uh, Cooks, Ingram, Juju, and Injoku here, if permitted, 
It is to a tongue of Iloa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, this has worked out things, real things well. Things go wrong sometimes. In yeah, a draft. That, that, so so I can't I can't draft him. No, but you get anyone else. Your choice. Yes. <laughs> Anybody else. <laughs> Great. Um Coyle Herbert. Well played, Mike. Thank you. I am looking for that explosive Zach Charbonnet. Ups. Thanks. Keep giving me running backs. So no Tua. That's that's brutal. He's not coming back to me. The wait is going to be so long. Same thing happened in our last mock draft. You know, it's it's tough. I look at Jameson Williams, and I'm like, man, I'd love Jameson Williams minus the suspension here, right, because of the potential upside of that player. I don't think I can do it. My team is too thin at wide he, receiver. Is, is his an eight-game suspension? I believe it's six, isn't it? Yeah, six. Uh, okay. Brooks is nodding. Six, all right. uh, I would never draft Cortland Sutton. I'd be embarrassed to tell my friends and family about that. I've already been noped, so I'm going to go to the well with Zay Flowers. Zay Flowers, I'm going to go back-to-back. Quentin Johnson, Zay Flowers. Hey. That I think that is the strategy of if if you if, get stuck with five yeah, running backs somehow, to start your draft somehow you're in a draft where other people make selections for you and <laughs> you're just loaded with testosterone to I to, did it last to get year. a bunch of high upside picks here at the back I think it's so I think it's smart it wasn't the same situation obviously but in league of record last year I was down a lot of picks at the top and my strategy was at the back of the draft. I went Traylon Burks, Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave. Um, it wasn't Pickens. I think I had one more rookie wide receiver, and it it proved super valuable later in the year because, you know, they were they were trade bait. They were very attractive in keeper leagues. So, yeah, I'm going to go Johnson and Flowers. And if I get one of those two to be what a Wilson or Olave was last year, to go with Evans and Burks, yep, I'm happy. that's a win. So I, I was tempted to go the, the player that went next, Pat Fryermuth, a little bit. Because I do feel like even though he's not a top tier tight end, he's going to be a very steady tight end. Tua went next, of course. And Jason, you're back on the clock. We are mayhem free. Yep. We, so free Mike, you can walk out the door. Oh, you can I'm just leave. Free. Yeah. Wow. I I was sitting here already playing the game in my mind of okay, if I go this way, because uh, the player that I want sitting here right now, I, y this team has just worked out where I want it balanced. A lot of times, what happens at a draft, if I grab two or three you know, or five, uh, <laughs> like strong running backs to start a draft, then I'm going to kind of leave there with a lot more wide receivers than I do running backs or vice versa. If I start with three stud wide receivers, I'm going to shotgun approach the, uh, you know, the, the running backs. But this has been a balanced draft back and forth. And so I want to kind of leave with about the same running backs and wide receivers. You have gone back and forth since round three. I didn't realize that, but I, I, I feel it. Um, and I'm going to go back again. I'm going to take Samaj P. Ryan, a guy that Andy's been talking about. You know, you've got Javante Williams here going three and a half rounds ahead of Samaj P. Ryan. And the expectation, I think, from us right now is that week one, the main man is going to be Samaj P. Ryan. All right, Jason, you're back on the clock here in the 10th round as we close out this draft. You went P. Ryan. Uh, Penny would have been in contention there, too, I think. And then he went next. Um, uh, Jamal Williams, uh, Sutton, Charbonnet, Herbert. The quarterback I was targeting after Tua is now gone. Anthony Richardson. I was going to look at the upside there. Uh, Bateman, Cousins, Geno. I'm running out of quarterbacks, guys. People are taking backups. Yeah. Elijah Moore. And then um, Jamison Williams did go. Jason, you're back on the clock. Two picks left. You do need a tight end in one of these next two picks. Yes, I do. Um, and when I'm looking at the tight ends that I like that are left, there's there's a handful of them. Um, uh, fortunately, one of these players I know Andy likes a lot. And so that's going to force my hand to take a tight end here and take Chig Okonkwo. Mm. I'm going to do the right stuff here. Thank you. <laughs> I was hoping that drop would come back in. I was thinking about that yesterday. I, very, very happy that you are basically me. I mean, P. Ryan Okonkwo back to back <laughs> yeah. is, I mean, they're your, they're you're your like guys? my pseudonym. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> One of my many. One of my many. Uh, Devon A. Chain was on the board there. Uh, that would have been a fun uh, player to take if I didn't have five running backs. And I have to take a quarterback and a, and a tight end with my last two picks here. So looking at the quarterback landscape, there was one name that I would hope would just be hanging around at the end. I'm going to take it here so I don't risk him being gone. Aaron Rodgers is going to be my quarterback. I'm going to look at that Jets offense, the rebirth there, the money they paid, and just say, I hope you get a resurgent year from Aaron Rodgers, a la Tom Brady in Tampa for a year. Dalton Kincaid and Dalton Schultz go next. 
yeah, okay. Jared Goff, Beckham, my final pick. It's got to be a tight end. You know, there's there's one name on this list that uh, we've talked about quite a bit. Actually, there's two. Dulcich and Higby are the two that I'm thinking about. I've cooled on a, a player like uh, Gerald Everett just based on camp reports of Donald Parham getting it done. Um, Everett was heavily involved last year, but only 400 yards receiving total. Um, yeah, so it's between those two. I'm trying to see if I can find a, a, another – a little sneaky potential guy. K. Otten is being brought up a lot um, as a second-year tight end. But I'm going to go with – I'm going to go with Greg Dulcich. I'm going to take Greg Dulcich. Is it the so, Jared Stidham news that's psyching you out yeah, here? Yeah, well, I just feel like Dulcich is more of a risk and Higby is more safe, but Dulcich has more upside. Higby's upside has kind of been – we've seen it. It's been there. We've done that. So Rodgers and Dulcich, to, fit, to close this this mayhem out. What's really funny is those were the two players I was between at tight end was uh, Chigo Conquo and Greg Dulcich. I like Greg Dulcich more than Chigo. Yeah, you've been more vocal about that. I just wanted to take Chig for Yeah, me. no, I mean. And so, you know, sometimes when you're playing fantasy with your friends, it's less sure, about. But you would, you would have forced Andy's hand into a, a super Titan stack. With Traylon Burks and Chickaconquo. Yeah, and I would have blindly done it without noticing. <laughs> mm. I, that's true. I, I didn't notice that. So now I'm sitting here looking at my roster. I'm pretty balanced. Uh, I've got Jalen Hurts and I've got Chickaconquo, so I don't need the onesies. Najee Harris, James Conner, uh, David Montgomery, and Samaj P. Ryan at running back. Cooper Cup, Terry McLaurin, Mike Williams, and Gabe Davis at wide receiver. So I'm just looking for an upside play. Someone that could sit on the bench and maybe be something special. And if that's the case, to me, that's Rasheed Rice. Uh, I, I'm going to take the shot at a rookie wide receiver who I think was pretty good, who gets to land with um, Patrick Mahomes. You know, what we saw last year from Sky Moore, he had the opportunity, he failed. Uh, Kadarius Toney, uh, will he ever be able to be on the field? They lost Juju Smith-Schuster. And Travis Kelsey's a year older, so there there is a pathway here. You know, more than likely, Patrick Mahomes just spreads it around, and there isn't a guy. I'm still on this guy more over Rashi Rice train. Uh, they both uh, went in the final round here, five I would, picks apart. And I've been very vocal of uh, my hesitancy on Sky Moore, especially talking the dynasty. But between those two, I would go Sky Moore this year. Um, so you you just really don't like Rashi Rice as a prospect? No, it's it, not that at all. Of just the after the season they were talking about how the this the way that this offense was structured it was a little more difficult for rookies to pick up so i'm going to give sky Moore, who had the second round draft capital i'm going to give it just between him and another rookie i'll give the the benefit of the doubt to the guy who's been in the system for a year do you want to hit that button one last time before i read my roster mike yes i do mayhem i knew that was a lot of fun i i've never seen a draft go this way. Um, I'm looking at my team, and it went five running backs, four wide receivers. That was the order. And then my quarterback and tight end, McCaffrey, Jacobs, Gibbs, Akers, Madison. I can tell you our draft analyzer is going to say your running backs are great. Evans, Burks, Johnston, Flowers, and then Rodgers and Dulcich. I've got Cooper Cup, Jalen Hurts, Najee Harris, Terry McLaurin, James Conner, Mike Williams, David Montgomery, Gabe Davis, Samaj P. Ryan, Chigakonkwo, and Rasheed Rice. This was uh, this was a lot of fun. Uh, I'm sure you had a lot of fun. Oh, too, I Mike. had a great time. It, it's funny because I felt like um, I felt like the way it was started. It started. I got off the hook, <laughs> and Jason was going to be the man <laughs> suffering. And then I feel like at the end, it got revealed that I was mayhem. I was the one being conned all along. So um, we will get these. You can't Mayhem let, rosters into the draft analyzer and share those results over on social media. You can't let your mark know that they're the mark. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 And um, here I was. Well, I'm going to go Gibbs. I caught you off guard. Uh, but no, we'll get we'll get all of that. You can see the full draft board on YouTube. Um, it's all up there. It was a good exercise in uh, flexibility and, and changing these teams and thought processes around. I'm not that unhappy with my team. It, the ride was bumpy 
Yeah, it was. But um, but I'm pretty happy. How do you feel, Jay? Yeah, I, I feel pretty good about my team, and I and I don't think that your team can absolutely win. I mean, there's so many different ways you can construct a roster, and there's ideal ways, and then there's ways you have to pivot to when things go wrong. Obviously, in your draft, you're not going to be forced into taking five running backs to start, but this is a good exercise to see, well, if if stuff goes wrong, how do you deal? Yeah, absolutely. So that'll do it for this Saturday edition of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Draft analyzer available now. Check that out at ultimatedraftkit.com. Three shows a week the rest of this month. Enjoy your weekend. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.